I believe it is extremely likely that this year Democrats propose some kind of mass amnesty for illegal immigrants. The news we have right now from the Daily Caller, Biden considering granting amnesty, handing out green cards to illegal immigrants. Now, this is limited to start. The reporting is uh, only the illegal, Ill- illegal immigrants that have been here for a certain amount of time. They would be eligible for green cards. Now, these green cards, it's not going to grant them the right to vote. Certainly in places like New York and San Francisco, they are trying to make it that if you're a legal resident, you can vote. So even non-citizens can vote. Then what they'll do later on is claim that if you live here in a legal resident, not having rights to vote, well, that's discrimination akin to slavery. But I believe it's extremely likely. Take a look at what they're doing on the southern border. The mass importing of non-citizens, and, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that to be cute, criminal aliens and any other immigrant. Democrats want to pad their electoral college numbers and their congressional seats. And this is a path not just, you know, many people say this will create single party rule in this country forever. Not so much. It will create the grounds for, oh, you know, I'm going to say it. Civil war. They are effectively importing a different country into this country at the levels they are currently bringing people in. There will come a point where major cities are not comprised of Americans, but massive to the tunes of millions non citizens. Now, let me slow down because I know all the fact checkers are are already screaming and crying. Right now, it's estimated that we have between 10 and 15 million illegal immigrants. But you see, the game they play is they don't tell you how many legal immigrants. I love legal immigration. I think it's fantastic. I love the idea the United States has become this great melting pot where we attract the brain power of other nations and say, why don't you come to our country? Bring your talents here. But at a certain level, you begin to erode the underlying fabric of what made that nation work in the first place. And with the level of, I don't care if it's illegal or otherwise, there is an upper limit to the immigration you can bring in. And this is not a personal opinion. This is a fact. Now, the left would argue immigration's fine. Who cares about their culture or what they think? Well, that's an opinion. My point is you cannot maintain the underlying fabric of a culture while mass importing people from different cultures. What you will do is instead of creating a melting pot, you are creating two distinct factions, the international, non-American, non-American traditional faction and the traditional American faction. Now, it is possible that some of the people who, who come here as children through either legal or, or illegal immigration end up becoming conservative and saying, I love this country and what this country stands for. And they learn its history. That's true, too. But the levels we are seeing mass illegal immigration into this country it will begin to displace and disrupt. Now, as we've talked about quite a bit with the context of civil war in this country, there is a multicultural democracy and a constitutional republic. This country is and always has been a constitutional republic. But there are forces, I would say leftist, that want to make it a multicultural democracy, which, of course, more so just means authoritarian dictatorship. I can explain why very simply. Non-unified communities do not organize around shared principles and thus never dominate the oppressive power. When you have, uh, let's say you have a country, 90% of the people believe in independence. They say no to the king. Boom, you have independence. The American Revolution was not even necessarily a large, uh, I don't believe the majority of this country actually wanted independence. Back when the fighting had begun, which was well before 1776. I mean, the war actually, the fighting had begun long before 1775, but they say the Revolutionary War started in 1775, Lexington and Concord. Most people in this country, uh, I I would say, you you could actually argue there was a majority of either who did not want revolution or did not want to be involved. That's right. But between the actual factions that were at odds, loyalists versus rebels. The rebels certainly outnumbered the loyalists and the people in between who said, I don't want to be involved, thus as neutral votes did not contribute. And so there is this um, historical, I guess, urban legend that there was uh, it was one third wanted it, one third opposed it and one third were for it. And it's, that's not not true at all. Uh, that was just a, 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 a it was it was it was a statement 
provided in a letter that was basically saying, like, generally speaking, you have around these numbers. But I believe it was actually like in the high 20 percents that were loyalists. It was in the high 30 percents that were uh, or, or maybe even low 40s that were for independence. And the remaining were leave me alone. The point is, the more they bring these people in and offer them amnesty, the less your worldview, your traditions and your values matter because they're being diluted. And what that means is, should this continue, Democrats, the way, the way, I'll, I'll put it this way, they're so desperate to give themselves an, a, an unconstitutional and illicit advantage in Congress and in the electoral college vote count that they would erode this country and grind it to dust. And that's what we're seeing right now. Well, let's read the news. Daily Caller reports. President Joe Biden is currently considering granting amnesty to illegal migrants in a bid to act on the worsening immigration crisis, according to Politico. Biden and his administration are weighing several ideas to take a tougher stance on the southern border crisis and illegal immigration. And amid criticisms, he has thus far failed to act on either. The administration could start doling out green cards to illegal immigrants who have long stayed in the U.S., thereby giving them amnesty to stay in the country. Three people familiar with the planning told Politico. The plan would grant migrants who have been in the country for more than 10 years access to the cancellation of removal program, provided that they have relatives who would suffer if they were deported, according to Politico. Migrants would then receive a green card, a permanent residency grant, if they meet the cancellation of removal requirements, and an immigration judge rules in their favor. It would represent a larger effort by Biden to take action on behalf of illegal immigrants who have long stayed in the U.S., the three officials told Politico. All right. And they go to mention that Obama took similar action with DACA. But basically, what, what is this? Right now, we have numerous illegal immigrants who have committed very serious crimes. They're not being deported. And everyone wonders why. Well, part of the plan Democrats have is you must keep these people in the country at all costs. Not only does it erode people's ability to organize, thus weakening. Look, if you have a country that is 100 percent unified around its founding traditions. Good luck forcing them to do things they don't want to do. If you begin bringing in non-citizens who have no loyalty to the founding documents and principles of the country. Now you've got, well, look, 40 percent of the people are saying this and 60 are saying this. Here's what you need to understand. It's all laid out right here for you in this factcheck.org. I already know that the left is coming out and saying, but Tim is wrong. There's only an estimated 10 million illegal immigrants. There's 330 million people in this country. So what? A, 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 a tiny portion? 3% if that? What are we doing the math wrong? 330, uh, so not even? And you think they're going to change the fabric of a nation? Well, that's racist. Let me read this story for you. Elon Musk overstates partisan impact of illegal immigration on house apportionment. This one will explain to you exactly what their game is. They say in claiming that illegal immigration benefits Democrats, entrepreneur Elon Musk vastly overstated its impact on the apportionment of house seats and electoral college votes. The math, as I understand it, you can research this obviously very easily on the Internet. It's pretty straightforward to research this. But my understanding is the Democrats would lose approximately 20 seats in the House if illegals were not counted in the census. And that's also 20 less electoral votes for president, Musk said in a statement with journalist Don Lemon on March 19th. So illegals absolutely do affect who controls the House and who controls the presidency. It does not affect the Senate. I believe the hard number is, um, let's do the math. It's 13. The high estimate is 13 seats for Democrats. Now, hold on. There is something wrong with that in that not all illegal immigrants live in Democrat jurisdictions. So the, the estimates uh, from actual organization, organizations that track this say that some states, it may be one extra seat as high as seven. If you go by the hard numbers, it could theoretically be 13. But let me show you how, let me show you the Democrats play the game and then you'll understand. They want to say that's inaccurate. In December 2019, the Center for Immigration Studies, a think tank, that, think tank that advocates lower immigration, released an analysis of the impact of legal and illegal, illegal immigration on the apportionment of seats in the U.S. House in 2020. Looking only at immigrants in the country illegally, the yardstick Musk employed, CIS estimated they were responsible for the redistribution of three seats in 2020. Looking at it in partisan terms, two states with a Republican-controlled legislature and a Republican governor. I don't know what that has to do with the House. 
and one state with a divided legislature. Again, we're talking about congressional seats and electoral votes. Electoral votes, it may benefit Republicans. But hold on, we're not done yet. It says uh, a Democratic governor each had fewer House seats due to the inclusion of immigrants living in the country illegally in population counts, gaining one extra seat were two blue states, New York and California, and one red state, Texas. In other words, the estimated net impact was that one Democratic state picked up a seat from a Republican state. Now, let's pause right there. Don't you think it's a problem that Democrats have an extra seat in Congress that literally is just due to illegal immigration? That's what they're saying. Two seats go to Democrats. One goes to Republicans based on illegal immigration, which gives Democrats a net plus one. Yeah, I think that's wrong. But hold on. I'm keeping you waiting for a minute. They go on to mention a July 2020 analysis by the nonpartisan Pew Research Center based on government data similarly found if unauthorized immigrants in the U.S. were removed from the 2020 census, a portion of it count, three states could each lose a seat. Now let's stop. You may be saying, Tim, it's just one seat. I get it. And that's where amnesty comes in. When Democrats keep giving these immigrants, illegal immigrants or otherwise, speedy paths towards becoming citizens, they are padding their numbers. Let me break it down for you. We can say based on illegal immigration, Democrats get one extra seat. But has anyone asked about the net migration in total as Democrats continually push for more and more migration? What about um, what about chain migration? You see, this is where they're not actually talking to you about the total impact of general immigrants. Now, let's let's play this game. I'll say it again. Uh, I'm totally for immigration, 100 percent. But it has to be done in an economic and uh, strategic manner, meaning people need to come in. They, we, we need to help place them places so that they can find jobs and they can succeed. Because the last thing we want is people to come here and then be upset, can't find work. And that happens or die in the desert. However, here's a problem we have. It's not just illegal immigration. Chain migration is an issue. An individual uh, 20 years ago enters the country illegally and has a child. That child is now an American citizen. The parent is not. Eventually, the parent living here illegally gets deported. Well, that's because Republicans don't want people to come in here illegally. But that child then, at 18, sponsors the parent. That parent now returns legally. Sponsorship can be done by anybody. Uh, for the most part, I believe. You can basically assume liability on all public debts of the individual allowing them to come here. So what happens then is you will get a single individual who has family outside the country who will start sponsoring and sponsoring and sponsoring. And one one person could legally bring in asymmetrically a handful of other people. Now we're looking at that one person uh, accounting towards five in the census. The point is this. Our country cannot survive as a country if the population is being replaced. You know, the funny thing is the Democrats call that a conspiracy theory. No, that's actually a fact. And I'm not arguing like that. Democrats have said we want to you know, make the, demog- uh, the, the demographics blue or something. No, no, no. I'm talking about the people who fled New York and Florida. I'm sorry, New York to Florida and California to Florida or to Texas. Then Democrats bring in a bunch of illegal immigrants into these cities because they lost so many residents to Florida and Texas and a few other states. I think West Virginia saw a decrease of many more left leaning individuals. But this is the point. This factcheck.org is talking about illegal immigration. What they're not telling you is that when they grant amnesty to these people, they're no longer illegal immigrants, so they won't count towards those numbers. In the past 30 years, I think we should do this. How many non-citizens have entered the country and what is the percentage of overall currently alive immigrants today who, who, who arrived in their lifetime, like not their kids? And how does that impact the the election? Look. Do you believe that elections uh, uh, should be free and fair to my Democrat friends? Do you think that elections should be? The best man wins those who make the right argument. So Joe Biden says, come on, man, you know, we got to get rid of these ATM fees, these junk fees. You like that idea? OK. Donald Trump says we got to build a wall. Don't like that idea? OK, that's fine. The issue is 
none of that actually matters. The election is not predicated upon whether or not a candidate can convince people to vote for them. It's the electoral college. And this means that Democrats over the past 30 years just said, get more people in. So we have more seats in. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. Here's how it's supposed to work. A politician goes to Chicago and says, here's my plan. Another politician goes to Chicago and says, here's my plan. Then they go, well, I, you know, I think politician A had the right answer. The other person says, are you sure you don't think politician B had the right answer? Well, let's let's debate the idea and then see who does better. Not how it's happening. How it's happening now is Republicans are going, hey, everybody, vote for me. And Democrats are like, why waste our time? Bring a bunch of people and mark them on the census. And we own this city in 10 years. And that's where we're at. It's no surprise that Joe Biden is actually considering some degree of amnesty right now. I would not be surprised if later on in this year, there is an attempt by the Biden administration to enact some kind of mass amnesty. Uh, they may try start. They might start at the city level and it may be soon because a lot to go through the courts, but they want to get this in now. Why? 2032. They may be thinking we're not going to win 2024. Maybe we win 2028. Who knows? But 2032, the new census will have kicked in and Democrats will have gained seats unless unless those who believe in this country just think about it. Now, there are there are people who are illegal immigrants. DACA recipients who, like Trump, want to stay in this country, believe in this country and hate the left. And that and that presents an interesting predicament. Unfortunately, the majority of people who come to this country illegally don't know and don't care. This is true based on the polling. They don't know and they don't care. They're here because there's PlayStation, because there's Buffalo Wild Wings. And those are quotes. I'm not being cute. That was a quote given to the L.A. Times. The illegal immigrants in the caravan said, I want PlayStation and Buffalo Wild Wings. How do you think those people are going to vote? Well, they won't. They're not citizens. That's the important distinction. But they will, in 2030, in the next census, give Democrats an advantage. Democrats, it, it really is simple. They keep saying, how many seats are they getting from illegal immigration? And let's just say, according to CIS, they're correct. And it's a net positive of one. That's one too many. That's not fair. But the reality is much simpler. Ronald Reagan offered amnesty. Let me tell you. You have people born in this country. Some of these people were forcefully brought to this country and uh, uh, were enslaved. Now, I ask you, who deserves to inherit this country? Is it the descendants of those who founded it? The descendants of those who were freed from the shackles in a civil war? I know it's more complicated than that. Or between uh, and, and the Native Americans who are already here, these people all throughout the history of the United States in this conflict. Or should we give the inheritance of this country to people who just showed up last month? Something doesn't make sense, does it? I'd argue this. Let's take it to progressive. The ideas of reparations coming from BLM activists have more merit in this country than illegal immigrants. Someone who's not from this country who says, I think we should do X, meaningless. An American whose family's been here since the 1700s and uh, they're a Black Lives Matter activist leftist. OK, well, their their worldview may be wrong. I disagree with their political opinions, but they have more a more of a right to express that and vote because. You know, they're they're part of this country, whether we like it or not. I mean, their their opinions are their opinions, and those opinions are allowed. Maybe we disagree, and that's good. But that's not what we're dealing with right now. And I think a lot of people in the black community in various cities, and black communities in various, various cities are realizing this. In Chicago, many black voters are saying we're being replaced. They're bringing in Latin American, Hispanic, and Central American individuals to pad the electorate in these places, and they're ignoring the plight of those who actually live there. This is not a tenable situation. It means that as we move forward, you may find in this country there will be pre-American and post-American. Those are the factions. Or we could say post-American and American. I think it's fair to say that the illegal immigrants who are coming in and the activists who support them are post-Americans. They want the end of this country. They don't care about this country. They don't know what that means. You take a look at these young people who are entitled. They hate America. They don't know anything about America. But they certainly want to see America destroyed. 
they have no idea what their lives would be like. They seem to think that were they to destroy this country, they would then live in this utopia where they have free food. And it's just it's all because of America. I'd imagine a lot of this comes from China, a lot of this propaganda, potentially Russia or otherwise. But we're looking at what's going to happen in this country right now. New York Post. Border Patrol Union President's warning. Biden deflating border numbers. Mass amnesty is coming. Well, far be it for me to actually care about what the Border Patrol says. They're knowingly engaging in child sex trafficking, so not really all that interested. But this is where we are at, and the warning is in plain sight. Joe Biden is likely going to offer up some amnesty, various degrees, like DACA or otherwise, because they want to make sure that if they lose in November, they can retain as many illegal immigrants as possible because the goal is 2030. It's the long game. The census in 2030, it's it's 10 years and it feels like a long time to some people. But you're 50 or 60. You're like, hey, look, 10 years can go by in the blink of an eye. And then they're going to redraw the lines. The cities will become more and more entrenched with people who don't know and don't care. And the residents who are from there, they're not too happy about it. Women are now getting punched in the head in New York randomly. Well, there's your equality for you. I hope you enjoy it. And then in the end, there will eventually be, whether anyone likes it or not, there's going to be a conflict in this country because there's going to be too many people who don't care about this country and too few who do. Right now, the majority of people in this country like this country. But what happens when it's 50-50? And then what happens when that 50% that hates the country votes to destroy it? And the other 50 says, no, you won't. I think it's obvious. But I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.